Hey, this is Rich from Auto Shepherd, and today we're going to be doing a little experiment. We've all heard of the terrible greenhouse gases that are emitted from the vehicles that we drive every day. But can you think of another device that you use regularly that might be furthering the decline of our air quality? We'll give you a hint. Yes, for years we've been focusing our attention in one direction, but it looks like we may have made a giant oversight. Although small in stature, the average family lawnmower is having a massive effect on America's air quality. There was a brief article posted in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette a few years ago and the details in it were shocking. Here are the facts directly from the EPA. Currently, there are 52 million residential and commercial mowers, both the ones you push and the ones you ride, and other large lawn equipment that the EPA estimates are in use nationwide. Such lawn equipment is operated about 3 billion hours a year, the agency says, and a typical push mower emits as much hourly pollution as 11 cars, with the riding mower emitting as much as 34 cars. Surprising? Well this certainly isn't common knowledge, hardly even Jeopardy knowledge. Have you ever seen a catalytic converter on a lawn mower? Probably not. Yet, the EPA estimates that it could cost as little as $10 per engine. That's a small price to pay for cleaner air. Especially when considering the cost of replacing a catalytic converter on a normal vehicle. It could be upwards of $60, and that's a conservative estimate. The EPA won't specifically ask companies to install catalytic converters on their equipment, but this is one of the most effective ways to reduce the smog-causing emissions from the engines. Today we're going to test three vehicles of different brands, engine size, and vintage and pit them up against our lawnmower to see which one pollutes the most. The Subaru Impreza. When introduced to these shores in pixelated form, the Impreza and amped up WRX and STI versions set the tuning world on fire. This fire is yet to be extinguished because it's pretty hard to beat a relatively light chassis with a turbo, all-wheel drive, oh, and a factory warranty. The Suburban. This beast is the automotive equivalent of a rolling skyscraper. It is literally over two tons of glass, metal, and leather. Any bigger and it would be a school bus. Saab 99. Known for their quirky looks and for being born from jets, the Saab 99 is one of Sweden's proudest exports. Today, we're going to find out if it's as smoking as a Swedish supermodel, from an emissions standpoint. Let's take a look and see how the drama unfolds. I'm not really sure because the car has been running hot, especially in summertime, so it might have too much uh, NOx on it, so it might not pass, but let's see. That it's run pretty good, pretty reliable. So.
Uh, the car is a 98 L Coupe. Originally, it was equipped with a, uh, I think, 2.2 liter NA engine, but I did a swap from an 05 STI, turbocharged um, 2.5 liter, along with the six speed manual and uh, driver control center differential, uh, along with the Brembo brakes and uh, hubs and everything from the air box to the, ex to the exhaust. I also took it to the state ref and I uh, got the carb sticker, the bar label. So it's 100% uh, legal. <laughs> HCA0, CO0, carbon dioxide, that's a good gas. Oxygen 2, that's a good gas. That's what we're breathing right now, NOx. So right now we're at not loaded. It's RPM 92 degrees. The 98 Impreza with the 2005 drivetrain passed the emissions portion of the test but failed the visual inspection due to a loose vacuum line and a check engine light. Now let's take a look at the results from our lawnmower. Now it's important to note that the lawnmower was under no load. If the engine is under a load, it's going to pollute a little bit more than the results of this test. Also, the lawnmower is running pure gasoline. There's no premix. The EPA safety study found if systems are retooled to allow for cool air to flow through them, small catalytic converters can successfully be installed in lawnmowers without elevating the risk of fire. The study looked at roughly 60 different engines and 30 types of catalytic converters and found that temperatures in the equipment could be the same or cooler than current models that don't use the devices. Use of a catalytic converter can cut small engine hydrocarbon emissions by 35%, EPA officials say. A few manufacturers are also offering electric mowers. These are quieter, use only several dollars a year worth of electricity, and don't require engine tune-ups or oil changes. The full details of the test will be posted on our blog.